Hello mate and welcome to a exciting and long awaited episode of Render Review. In this episode we've got four submissions, really high quality stuff as well. Before I get started a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon, that really helps me out. And of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, your names will be running up the video at the end. So our first entry is a return customer from Bradford, as we can see here, got a young lady who I assume is watching TV in her nightwear, just relaxing on the couch. So the first thing I can say is I'm really liking the feel of the image, it's really effective. There's not any glaring errors that immediately leap out at the eye. You know, some images you look at and you can immediately home in on something that's wrong. Whereas in this video you look at it and you get a sense of um, I was saying almost normality, you look at it and nothing leaps out at you as being wrong or amiss, which is really effective storytelling and really good imagery. So what we can see is the shirt is obviously a deforce model because of the way that it's draped across the bottom and the way that it's hanging on the body. And you can see that the use of deforce in the hair as well, either that or just some smart posing from Bradford there to make the hair actually hang with gravity from the way that she's got her head rested, which is, again, really important. This is one of those situations that you see an awful lot in Das Studio works that people create where they're too lazy or perhaps not skilled enough to move the hair and it drapes alongside the head so gravity just doesn't appear to affect it. And that really ruins the realism of the image, so a really good job doing that one there. What we've also got is the fist, um, head, the head being supported by the hand, which is balled in a fist, which is something that I think we've all done at some point in our lives, a perfectly sort of natural pose. And he's also been clever enough to not show the body actually resting on the cushions of the couch, which means that you don't have to worry about creating indentations on the couch or actually if there's any clipping with the shirt or the body there either. So smart use of composition. Overall, the composition is really good. You know, the, the head and the body are more or less in the uh, rule of thirds, vicinity of the rule of thirds, I would say. And the use of depth of field is really nice because it draws your eyes to the face, which is the sharpest thing in focus. And even though the background is not a great deal darker than the face, your eye still drawn towards the correct area of the image. And on that note, it's good to see that there's actually some really good lighting being used here as well. It actually looks like there's a television screen in view. It's not perfectly white light. As you can see, there's some kind of hue to it, which just makes it look a little bit more like a TV because very rarely does your television actually pump out pure white light. Now, normally in this in this sort of shot, you'll often hear me picking people up for not going um, very far with expressions. They just look blank. But um, when it comes to watching television, it's fair to say that most of us switch our brains off in terms of uh, controlling our facial muscles, unless we're reacting emotionally to what we're seeing. So having a blank and vacant expression in this instance is actually quite appropriate. So again, uh, another perhaps creative choice there may be an oversight, but either way, it's a happy accident which is really good. Nice to see the skin texture as well. If you look really close at the cheeks, you can see the light that's just catching the skin and you can see that there's a, a nice solid texture there and um, with a decent bump map on the facial texture and on the chest a little bit as well. Um, these, these, these images that we're receiving these days for render review are getting really, really strong and much, much closer to photo realism. Um, so it's becoming more and more difficult for me to actually find things that I would change. And as far as this image goes, I'm not seeing anything leap out at me that I would change other than perhaps making the background a little bit darker. The human eye probably would see not perhaps exactly like this, but it wouldn't see that much different if the TV was on. But as it stands, the background is still quite lit. Um, I think you could probably afford to go maybe one or two stops down on the background um, and making it a little bit darker just to reinforce the depth of field and the way that you've set the lighting up at the moment. But overall, it's a really strong image, so I'd be really pleased with that if I were you, Bradford. So well done. Next up is this entry from Lily Wang, a really solid image. Again, really enjoying the uh, the images this week. 
what we've got here is a young lady in a sort of a portrait kind of fashion with a blood splatter on her cheek which leaves a lot to uh, to the imagination because you don't really know what's happened in this scene because there's no real indication as to the um, overall thing this is one of those images where it's strong image on its own but with context would be even stronger so be interesting to see um what the what the score is with this one so good strong eye contact with the camera you can sort of see her staring and she's got a facial expression which is sort of conveying the mood of the image across she's not exactly happy um the mood that you get from this image is as i say she's not very happy and she's a bit of a badass because it's a blood splat on her cheek um you know an attractive young woman very really well lit i'm loving the hair light that's been used here to actually create this highlight so you can actually see the individual strands of hair i'm sure that the creator of the hair product themselves are probably quite pleased with it as well because often a lot of effort goes into creating those parts of realism in the uh, models for the hair and things like that and they often get overlooked where people have used massive amounts of denoiser or whatever or they haven't used a hair light of any kind so you can't see them so yeah really strongly lit image because you've got a good fill light keeping those shadows as you can see the shadows aren't completely black a nice key light bringing these orange highlights onto the face and then this white light around the back creating this halo effect that gives us our hair light so really nice it gives us a good strong contrast it gives us a feeling of depth as you can see with the way that the highlights are catching on the leather jacket they are conveying a depth of, of, of image that perhaps you wouldn't get if this wasn't lit quite as well uh, I'm, I'm feeling like this maybe is either an image in the background or an HDRI because I'm not seeing that although we have the hair light I'm not feeling that there's any light coming off of these individual lights in the background I may be wrong this is a sort of semi-educated guess based on the uh, crop of the image but it's uh, it's not a bad image by any stretch of the imagination it's a very very strong image and I'm liking the mood and everything about it and uh, just sort of looking for different, different uh, things that may be um just i'm seeing the grid and i'm thinking maybe this is a uh, an image background it doesn't ma make any difference in the quality of the render whatsoever i'm just thinking in terms of the direction of the light there's as i say I don't i don't feel like there's a lot of light coming off these lamps considering how bright they are but maybe that's just me again i like like bradford's image i'm really struggling to find anything that i would actually change in this image um it depends on the kind of story that you're trying to tell. If this were part of a visual novel, then obviously there would be contextual images before and after explaining what's happening. Um, from a, if this were a standalone image, I almost feel like I want to know more about what's going on. So maybe having some more indication in the image as to what's happened or happening um, would be the only thing that I really change. Overall, a really strong image though. Really proud of that one if I were you, Lily so keep up the good work my friend next up is this offering from Mayo de Mayo and as we can see it's a young lady sitting on the floor with a gentleman talking to her of some kind of this, this uh, conversation is happening here so overall not a terrible image at all um thoroughly enjoying the the story here there's something going on that i don't know about again um one of those th images where the context context would make a big difference in terms of the onlooker um there are one or two things that i can see that i would change straight away which is not a uh, reflection on my odds uh, abilities at all it's just me being really picky so it, the way that the image is lit at the moment just feels a little bit out by which I mean that there's there seems to be light coming from too many places at once, if that makes any sense. Um, there's the shadow, the contrast on this gentleman's face isn't very high, um, but the light doesn't seem to be. There's something wrong with the way his face is lit. There's there's this strong light coming in through what I would assume is a window that's catching on his shoulder and her chest. Um, and a little bit of that light is spilling onto the highlights of his face but because the ambient light in the background is almost as strong as that light is making the image look very flat around his face in particular and on her dress as well 
that's not necessarily making it a bad image by any stretch of the imagination, but it takes away some of the depth. It makes the image look less three-dimensional because there's, there's, there's a lack of shadows and highlights almost. So what I would do in this instance is crank up the light perhaps on this highlight that's coming in here and then tone down the ambient light a little bit just to give us a little bit more contrast, a little bit more depth. Overall though, good pose. You can see he's making eye contact with the side of her head and she's turned her face away for whatever reason. Um, there is a little bit of a gap underneath her bottom here where she's not making 100% contact with the floor. And I'm seeing that there's a similar thing over here happening with this food packet over here is hovering above the floor a little bit as well. It's those little details that are going to make all the difference when it comes to selling your images or selling the storyline because that those are the kind of things that the human eye is going to go, hang on, that's not right. And this is why I bring these things up is because um, my eye was immediately drawn down to here when I looked at the image um, to see around this crisp packet here where you want people to be looking up here at the interaction that's going on between our two characters <clears throat> which is another reason why i mentioned the flatness of the lighting on the gentleman's face because the lighting isn't drawing my eye to his face at all it's drawing it to this area which maybe is what you're going for depends on the kind of visual novel that you're making um but there's an interaction happening here between these two characters and it feels like there's it, because my eye isn't drawn to him at all it's um it, it it feels like it's just missing that little bit of extra attention to detail obviously there's no uh, depth of field in this image it doesn't necessarily make it a bad image it's that's more of a personal preference of mine um but again because this area of the image in the top left hand corner is very well lit it's drawing my attention away from the main scene as well. Even though there is brighter light over here, this is still space with stuff going on that I can actually see and it's drawing my attention away. So again, just thinking about your, your composition is pretty solid, but I would think about how you light and focus your camera just to make sure that you're drawing your attention to the right part of the image. But either way, it's a good strong image, certainly a great first submission from you, so well done Maya. Keep up the good work, my friend. Last up is this submission from Schiller Haste. A really, really good image this. I'm really loving the composition and the posing is really strong. You can see that the fingers are making good contact with the skin and they're casting shadows. You can also see a nice texture on the skin. It's not perfectly flat, so this is a really good natural looking portrait where there hasn't been any skin softening done you can see all of the pores and welts on there so that's really good and then the same thing on the face you can see that the texture hasn't been altered uh, or, or rather smoothed out this has got realistic looking skin you could almost be forgiven for thinking this was some kind of sort of funeral fashion portrait kind of thing because of the pose the sad expression on the face the black gloves and the black lace top and the fact that she's got earrings in, so she's clearly sort of done herself up, hence the strong colour of the lipstick. I'm really enjoying the lighting as well. There's good portrait lighting going on here. You've got your main light source coming from the left-hand side, and then you've got a smaller light source coming in from the right-hand side just to create that highlight down the cheek there. Give us a little bit of shape. But there's enough light coming into the scene that there are no black bits. There are no completely dark shadows. You can see detail in everything. But the balance is just right so that it feels like it's meant to. It's got that classic matte effect that makes kind of print magazines uh, look, look good, really. In these situations, it's often something that is out of the artist's control that lets them down. And I would say in this case, this area of the hair is the giveaway. I could look at this picture. There are two things that tell me this picture is CGI and really two things only. The first is the hair. There's the symmetrical pattern of the strands of hair. And again, I know that this is not uh, Schiller's bag. It's not her fault because it's the, obviously the creator of the hair that has uh, done this. So that immediately tells me CGI. The other thing that stands out and tells you is CGI is the line around the lips. 
no matter how good someone's makeup is, and believe me, as uh, during my professional photography days, I saw some pretty amazing efforts at doing makeup. No matter how good makeup is, there's never a perfectly straight, perfectly solid line between lipstick and the not made up part, especially when it comes to Dash Studio models, because on Dash Studio models, the lip texture is never perfectly aligned with the surface group. So you have the people who make these uh, lipsticks and these, these LIE uh, makeups, and they just basically fill the entirety of the lips surface group with a color rather than actually matching it to the lips texture themselves. And that's what creates this line around the edge that doesn't actually marry up with the lip texture itself. Again, not she really Schiller's fault in terms of that. That's obviously whoever made this lip product was very sloppy or lazy and just filled the entirety of the texture map with red when they should really have considered actually ma mapping it to the texture of the lips. So again, but overall, this is a genuinely amazing image. I really am sort of picking, being picky with these things. And again, as I said, not Schiller's fault that these things are there. Um, but those are the only two things that I think the average person would be able to spot that would tell them that this isn't a real image because of the hair and the lips. Everything else is, I would argue, photorealistic. Um, there is a slight separation where the gloves are hovering away from the skin, as you can see. So personally, when I'm wearing, when I'm putting things like this onto my models, what I tend to do is shrink them by one or two percent just so that they hug the skin a little bit tighter and just gives you a little bit more realism. As it stands, they don't look bad. They just look like they're slightly too big for her. That's all. They're just a little bit loose fitting, but that doesn't really spoil the photo realism of the image in my own humble opinion. So thanks ever so much to those guys for their submissions. Really, really strong submissions this week. I'm really impressed. I'm looking forward to seeing what else people can throw at me. So feel free to visit the website, thundorn.com. Check out the info section for how to submit your images to render review. And I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye. <laughs>